gatekeeping, localizations, fan translations. What's up guys, Zero to my kids in a here, still slaving away at that Sengoku Rants review. Yes! Say Raj. More! Gameplay. Gameplay. Iraj. But these three words generate some interesting reactions from everyone. And to be honest, I've wanted to give my thoughts on these topics for some time now, but I can never really articulate the thoughts in a series of lengthy, well written videos without scrapping them. So I'm gonna give myself 10 minutes max to talk about all three subjects in the same video. Pressure makes diamonds. Okay, this is probably the one I'm most solid about. As far as gatekeeping and entertainment goes, generally, I have no problem with the concept, with some exceptions. On the surface, I don't really get the complaints from certain groups of people. I mean, if you'll allow me to crank up the political knob to a one. A lot of the people complaining about gatekeeping seem to be the same ones who get mad about that, uh, what's that term? Cultural appropriation. But now that gaming and anime have supplanted more traditional Western entertainment, they want to yoink a culture that they previously bullied people over and use it as their own. Holy stack suck! Repressed anchor mats! Funny enough, I used to hate the idea of gatekeeping, and only a scant few years ago did I budge on that. I used to see more people enjoying the same stuff being a great thing, and even now I still feel that on some level. But over the years, that viewpoint was tempered by convincing arguments from friends and seeing time after time just how watered down something has to be for a wider audience. Not to say that I don't have some problems with the gatekeeping mentality, I mean, things evolve over time. And to be honest, a lot of the people guarding the gates don't always understand what they're talking about, especially in cases of something that doesn't really originate from their own part of the world. Like, you know, weave stuff and blackface claims. On a more personal note, I have had conversations that felt like gatekeeping when talking about Aeroge and how I review them. Some people don't like how gameplay focused I am with my coverage, when to them, the adult content should be the primary concern. I think that once you slap on the tag video game onto your product, gameplay criticisms are fair play, because otherwise, an adult game is just, I don't know, porn with extra work. Same reason I'm not a big fan of walking sims, but that's a conversation for another day. What isn't is when the claim you shouldn't do reviews get thrown into the mix. I'll never understand that level of gatekeeping, where you shut out people who aren't trying to incur change for their own subjective means, but instead for reasons you'd be hard to argue are not objective improvements. On the flip side, let's take a random anime example, uh, the Fire Force controversy. Was it even big enough to be called a controversy? That's a good example of when gatekeeping can be useful. In that example, people were criticizing the anime, its creator, and its fans for the sexualization of characters, what is this, My Hero Academia? Despite that being a core selling point of the series, dating all the way back to it being a manga. I guess one could argue they're trying to improve it in their own subjective way, but their perspective lacks any respect for the creator's intent, the existing consumers, or even the fact that not every product has to cater to their taste. And to be frank, the only way their improvements could happen would be to burn down the whole thing before rebuilding it in their new vision. Just like the white colonists they are- oh shit who turned the dial up? I don't know. I'd say that even these people should be debated rather than excluded, but once you start throwing around extreme questions of character like sexist or misogynistic, you know the stuff that had a hand in Takaki leaving his own baby Senran Kagura, I think any chance for a productive discussion goes out the window. I hate them. <laughs> kidding, kidding, come back. Honestly, I think when it comes to, you know, the niche side of the scene, official localizations get a pretty bad rap across the board, when it's bad apples that are tainting the reputation of the bunch. One thing I always come across is the idea of wanting an exact translation instead of something editorialized, basically the argument of translation versus localization, and if you don't know the difference, a localization is molding the text of something to get the core message across while fitting it within the culture of the end consumer, while translating is a much more cold and mechanical process of exactly moving the text from one language to another. The thing with Japanese though is that you can't 100% translate the text, it's very contextual, so when you just translate it you end up with something akin to Swiss cheese. 
and to make it readable, you have to fill in those holes with what honestly boils down to someone's interpretation of the text. So even the closest translation has some localization in it. Jokes are another point of contention, since they tend to only make sense in Japan. Depending on the localization, they may simply rewrite the joke into something more western, and while a part of me would rather the jokes be left alone, a good counterpoint is the Yakuza series. <laughs> now when it comes to things like honorifics and verbal tics, I still lean on the side of preferring something closer to a translation. Especially with verbal tics, dear god. <laughs> the one thing I don't like about the No Game No Life novels is having to stomach reading sentences that end in please. Feels like I'm reading ancient text from early 2000s Naruto. Believe it. While I wish there were some things different in the localization process major publishers do, I think they do a good job overall. But going back to what I said at the beginning of this section, bad apples make it easy to skew perceptions of the industry as a whole. So what do I mean by bad apples? Well, remember the part about translating Japanese being like Swiss cheese? Well, some people will use those holes to squeeze in their own worldviews, and I mean a little bit of that is to be expected as again, it's the localization team's personal interpretation of the text, hopefully with an understanding of the media beforehand, but man, sometimes those people will just disregard the source material in the process. And if it's found out, that's when the negative energies really boil over and further taints people's perception of the entire profession. One case of this was actually the catalyst of me making this video, a situation that pissed me off so much, yet I don't actually think that many people know about it. What no? Spoiler alert for the upcoming review, I actually really like the updated localization of Sengoku Rants. It even has a Kekko Kamen reference that I think was in the Japanese version and the fan translation missed it. No, instead, it was fake grand order Again. Okay, story time. And I'm cheating by not counting this for my 10 minutes. Me and my friend were just chilling, talking about Fake Grand Order, arguing about game balance and mechanics, something we do often since I am an NA player and he's a JP player. When the conversation shifted to the Epic of Remnants, and how I just hadn't really felt like playing them after the Detroit Emia thing I did a video on a while back. In comes in my friend innocently saying, Oh, well, you should just watch the fan translation of Agartha online, since the localization toned down a lot of it. Huh? Well, that, or learn Japanese, it's not that hard. <laughs> not believing him, I did a quick look up to see, yeah, some people were complaining about aspects of the Agartha localization, including claims about a small bit that wasn't simply localized, but was outright removed from the NA version. A bit skeptical, I went back to my friend, only to hear something to the effect of, well, yeah, did you expect Ina to keep in all the trap jokes? It didn't help that this happened around the same time that my Twitter account was just surrounded by people fighting over Astafo, Dion, and Da Vinci. <laughs> Seeing that the spokesperson for Ina claimed that the localization would be as close to JP as possible, that's the kind of cultural, political BS that makes people paranoid and criticize localizations as a whole, because localizers not going to try and make a claim on whether or not it's a few of them or most of them, believe that a proper localization should prioritize avoiding offending customers over accuracy. Even before this, I remember years ago, a localizer for some visual novel polling their Twitter followers on whether or not a vulgar character should have their vulgarity toned down in a localization. But back on FGO, I think the claim of being as close to JP as possible happened before the game really exploded in popularity. And right now, people are getting a crash course in how money affects a company's commitment to their values. Something to note, some people think only one side of the fandom gets mad over localization changes, but a good example on the other side of the aisle was the recent Neon Genesis Evangelion localization, where the localizer chose not to include the subtext, if you could call it that, between two male characters. The funny thing though, was that despite all the death threats and harassment, the localization wasn't technically incorrect. Kill him! Whoa now, I ain't got no problem with Shinji 1 in the D. Just means Ray's available. But beyond the outrage, a lot of people have pointed out that his translation was just leaning on a more literal interpretation of the text. Maybe without him knowing the greater context of the series. And remember what I said earlier. I mean a little bit of that is to be expected as again, it's the localization team's personal interpretation of the text, hopefully with an understanding of the media beforehand, and also, 
UNACCEPTABLE! So I was going to add a section about dubs specifically, but this is kind of dragging on. So in summary, I think a lot of people work really hard to give the most accurate localizations possible, but there are people who I guess also think they're giving people what they need, but in my mind are bad apples spoiling the bunch. The way I see it, respect localization groups that haven't shown themselves to be censorious, and to be blunt, fuck the ones that do. But at the same time, understand localization isn't math. There is no perfect translation. Okay, two down and this is probably going to be the shortest of the bunch. I'm pretty sure with how I went about the previous section, you're all expecting me to be all praise for fan translations, right? Well, yeah. I'm old enough to have grown up when fan translations and fan subs were the only way to consume most niche titles. And even now, it's still like that when it comes to games with more controversial characters. So I have mad respect for those who go through the efforts to fan translate content. And I won't lie, it does help that the less professional environment means that translators have more freedom to include the kind of stuff I like. Verbal tics, honorifics, yada yada, and translator's notes. Be patient with me, I unironically love translator's notes. Ah well, okay, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Like first of all, if you're new to fan translations, do not get your hopes up. Fan translation plans pop up all the time with grandiose goals, sometimes roadmaps, sometimes even full team recruitment. But most of them disappear just as quickly as they show up. Or was he never there to begin with? Honestly, that makes me respect finished translation projects even more, especially games, since unlike books or animes, you gotta deal with coding. And from what I've heard, eh, Japanese programming ain't all that pretty or concise. There is another criticism of fan translations though. One that I don't hear nearly as often, that being accuracy, the very thing I hear people desire the most out of official localizations. The quality of fan translations can vary greatly from project to project, and I get criticizing localizations when you have purchased a product only to perceive defects in it, but claiming that fan translations are higher quality? Eh, yeah, I don't know about that. Social cultural BS aside, I think it's fair to say that in terms of accuracy, raw, naked accuracy, the group that's actually connected to the original creators at least a little bit has a better shot of reaching it. Hopefully. It's funny too talking about social BS and localizations because only recently did the thought pop into my head. There isn't anything preventing a fan translation from taking the same liberties as an official localization. And I'd argue outside of being inside of a fan group willing to nitpick a translation to death, you're less likely to even know when something's off. That kind of leads me to think that it's really goodwill that separates the perception of fan translations and official localizations. Fan translations, on top of being free, can be seen as an expression of goodwill from fellow fans, and the poor, unfinished translations, those are viewed separate from the good ones, while localizations already have a poor reception with hardcore fans due to, well, the negative view of businesses nowadays in general, but also localizers rejecting niche translation expectations hostility to hardcore fans from select people in the official mediums, and that reception is made worse by bad actors being viewed as a representation of the entire craft. I don't know, that kind of falls back into my point in the previous section, but in regards to the relationship between localizations and fan translations, I do dislike how the official versions tend to just dismiss the work of the fan translations. Sure, that may sound overly idealistic, since you can't really blame a company for ignoring what at best can be viewed as competition, and at worst illegal activity, particularly when they have to maintain good relationships with Japanese companies, but at the same time, you got localizers shitting on people who practice fan translations, which luckily does get pushback from those in the business who started out as fan translators, as well as where it seems people on the side of localizations want to purge info from the fan translation era for being out of date, when I like the idea of at least maintaining them as a part of the history of the title. Okay, finished. Did I make it in time? No, 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 no. So those are the thoughts of a guy who, when the planets align, occasionally post weeb game reviews. I don't know if any of them are controversial or not, but leave your thoughts in the comment section. A lot of these views have been built from what I have seen from an outside view of the industry, and hopefully as I make more videos, one day I can interview someone more integrated into the scene, localization or fan translation, because I find it fascinating as well as sad how the sphere of entertainment I've enjoyed for so long has grown and just how divided it has become. But with that said, this is just my perspective. Uh, I 
I already said leave a comment. So, oh yeah, Patreon plug, Twitch plug, and I gotta get back to telekinetically shifting Uranus into position for this Sengoku Rats review. I'll see you guys next time. Matane.